Now, proprioception concerns our understanding of our body in a given space. So while I'm standing here talking to you, I'm aware of what my hands are doing, I'm aware of my, the fact that my arms are bent, I'm aware that I'm standing up straight. Now, part of this is because my brain is able to perceive by, by looking, but if I was to close my eyes, I still know exactly where my hand is. I still know that if I need to touch the whiteboard, I can do so. Okay, because I have the proprioceptors, I have the muscle spindles, the Golgi tendon organs, along with the other senses. So obviously I have my vision, I have my hearing, I have my skin uh, receptors, touch receptors, um, I have pain receptors. In, in the case of exercise, when we're exercising, we, we, we have an increase in temperature. So my thermal receptors are being activated as well. All of this information is going back to the brain and the brain is then able to um, uh, make the right output, okay, so able to send the right effector signal to control my, my movements. So essentially what proprioception is, is knowledge of your body in space. So if I just kind of bring that down here, knowledge of, for example, your joint position. Um, your sense of force and heaviness, and remember the Golgi tendon organs are uh, contributing to that. Even the sense of fatigue. Okay, uh, and obviously the coordination of uh, movements is dependent upon the proprioceptors sending signals back to, to the brain, to the spinal cord and to the brain. Okay, so proprioception is something that is beyond our conscious um, awareness of what's going on. So proprioception is often described as being like the sixth sense. Okay, it's that feeling that you have, you have when you're performing a particular movement. So one thing that I would give you as a task to, to, to do while, while, when you finish watching this video is to think about a situation, a sporting situation, that you uh, particularly enjoy. So it may well be that it's a sport that you regularly do, might be, for example, taking a penalty kick um, and try to think about when you've actually taken that penalty kick and the movement has felt just right. It could be another sport, it could be for, uh, boxing, for example, you throw a punch and you feel that that punch is perfect in terms of hitting the sweet spot and the feedback that you get. So think about your sport. Uh, earlier today, I gave a lecture to students and they gave, came up with some excellent examples. One example was the feeling of a basketball leaving the fingertips at that point, that, that student in particular knew that ball was going to go into the basket. And that was because of his proprioceptive senses. He, he, he's done his training, he's got the motor programs in his brain about how to do the movement. And when he's executed that movement in the best possible way, okay, the best possible way, which doesn't happen all the time, it's something that happens every now and again, unless you're an elite athlete, um, but you can feel the movement is just perfect. And you know before the, the, the ball is gonna go into the basket or the football is gonna go into the goal that you, you're gonna score, that you're gonna have success. And this feedback is from proprioception. So uh, it's, it's very important when we think about proprioception as like sensors of our muscle sensors, so the muscle spindles that we talked about earlier, which are detecting the position of the joint, the stretch of the joint, uh, and they're feeding that information back to the brain. Uh, and then the Golgi tendon organ, which is detecting the force and the heaviness. So in terms of a little bit of background with proprioception, it was first described by uh, a gentleman called Sherrington in 1906. Okay, so it was first described in 1906 by Sherrington, um, and it was at, at, the, at the beginning, it was actually believed that proprioception was receptors that were specific in the joint. They had nothing to do with the muscle, there were receptors in the joint, and that's what caused uh, this proprioceptive feedback or kinestasis. So kinestasis is this uh, uh, ability to, to know when you've performed, a, when you've executed a, executed a movement in the best possible way. Okay, so um, 
It was widely believed that it was the receptors in the joints that contributed to proprioception. However, research studies had actually shown that if you have joint replacement surgery, you still get proprioceptive feedback. So in an artificial joint, you've got that in place, but you're still getting proprioceptive feedback, tends to suggest that it's the muscles. It's the muscles, something in, within the muscles, which is giving us um, that feedback to the brain about a particular movement. So that's when muscle spindles and Golgi tendon organs were investigated and found to make a uh, contributory uh, effect in the proprioception. And, and generally, we can, we can actually trick our bodies. Well. So when we have vibration applied to our muscles, it feels really great because you're activating uh, these structures and it's sending signals back to the brain and the brain's thinking that the, uh, the muscle is moving, but obviously it isn't. It's, it's an external force which is causing the vibration and we feel all peculiar. And that's simply because these uh, proprioceptors are being triggered by the vibration and then they're causing uh, uh, these, these kind of um, uh, exciting feelings that we get in our mind. So muscle spindles, Golgi tendon organs are involved in the proprioceptive uh, response. Uh, but then we also have our vision, okay, what we can uh, see. We've also got our hearing. We've got uh, touch. And what we have here is skin receptors skin receptors which are actually detecting uh, changes in the stretch of the skin as we perform a particular movement. So all of that is giving us feedback uh, back to the brain. Now what's interesting about the skin receptors is that in our face we don't have muscle spindles but yet we st I still know if I'm smiling, so if I'm smiling now I know how to do it and I know that I'm smiling. Equally if I frown I know that uh, I'm frowning and it's because of the movement of the skin. Okay, so the skin is also a very powerful um, a proprioceptive sensor to give me feedback about where my skin is and how my facial expression is in a given moment in time. Um, so that's how powerful the skin receptors are. So you can imagine that if you're doing a, a particular movement, then you're not only feeling the muscle, you're feeling the skin as well. So next time you're doing a deadlift or a squat, try to think about all of the other sensors that you have in your body that are giving you feedback about the weight that you're lifting, the movement that you're performing. Uh, so we've got skin receptors, we've got photoreceptors as well. Uh, we've got nociceptors, which are giving us information about pain. Okay, so I'll just put in brackets here, pain, now, nociceptors uh, are obviously very important in exercise because any type of exercise you do will involve some degree of pain if you're doing it hard enough. Um, so this is another way in which we actually get feedback about what's happening in our body. Okay, so th that's just kind of like a, a, an introduction to proprioception. It's a very interesting topic. Uh, if you're interested in reading more about it, there is a paper called PROSC by Pr uh, PROSC and Gandevia, published in 2012. It's a comprehensive paper on, um, uh, on proprioception, and I've got a link on the bottom of the video. And I've also got a link to an interview that Ayrton Senna did where part of that interview he was talking or he was asked about proprioception, that's also worth a read and it will be at the bottom of the YouTube video.